Hello. Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Tech Torrent Podcast. How's everyone doing today? As usual, let me know if you can hear me, see me, and all that good stuff. Um, I'm looking at my end. All my audio levels look pretty good. Let me know if I'm clipping. I try to make it a little bit louder for you guys. I know it was a little bit quiet about two weeks ago, and I finally fixed that problem. So how's everyone doing today? Before we get started, we're going to take a look at live chat and see what's going on in the world. Let's see. So we got Soul7. Thank you for joining. We got Golden Wolf and just you two for right now. If you are here, let me know in the live chat. I'll give you a shout out. Also, guys, remember Soul7 is a loyal follower. That is why he has that wonderful purple fish next to his name in the YouTube comments. All right, guys. So I got something very special for you today. Um, this is something I've been wanting to do for a long time. And I'm afraid the application for this is so specific that it's literally going to help nobody except me. We'll see about that in just a moment. Um, so basically, I'm going to go over a few principles of uh, the problems I've been having and a solution that this box right here might change everything. It probably won't. Uh, it's going to only change it for me and the rest of you probably will never ever need something like this. But you know, hey, it's, I think it's cool. Um, let's take a look. Golden Wolf says, sounds good. All right, so guys, we're going to get into it. So uh, for those of you that don't know, I'm going to be talking about something called PoE. And PoE stands for Power Over Ethernet. So uh, about two weeks ago, we had an episode where we uh, made an Ethernet cable. Remember that? It's right here. Here's one I bought from the store. And you know, it's a thinner wire. It's a Cat5 type of cable. This is a Cat6. And it's basically thicker and is able to higher, handle a higher frequency. So we just made these, uh, or I made this little patch cable last week. And we're going to be using this today in our example. And this will be used as well. This is a little bit more flexible. It's a thinner. I think this is a Cat5 or it's probably a un, it's probably a low grade Cat6. Doesn't say. Well, whatever. It doesn't matter. So we're going to be going over that. And we're going to be talking about PoE, which is Power Over Ethernet. So just like I explained last week, if we imagine this is one of the eight strands, uh, one of the four, stra uh, four twisted pair in a Power Over Ethernet and a PoE in a ethernet cable right imagine this is one of them the electrical current the amperage the you know volts the direct current goes through the core of the wire okay that's where that travels the actual signal for your networking and all that other stuff your cameras whatever goes on the outside it flows on the outside of the wire that's where the signal goes okay so of course we've got eight conductors in here eight wires in here and that allows us to also put power down the system and there's many types of PoE, but the main ones, I'm not going to get into the exact numbering, but essentially they're designed to be backwards compatible with the previous versions of PoE. We got PoE original, which is like around 15 watts. Okay, probably less. It's probably like 7 watts. Got PoE uh, plus, which is, uh, okay, yeah. PoE, which is around 15 watts. PoE plus, which is around 30 watts. And PoE plus plus type three and four, which can be anywhere between 60 and 100 watts, okay? That is that much electricity, uh, wattage rather, flowing through this one cable, through your ethernet cable. Of course, that is all limited to the type of run you make. And the longer you run, the more voltage drop, you're gonna get less wattage at the end of the line. Most of them can go up to 100 meters and you get some voltage drop. I don't really need to run anything 328 feet in this studio. Most I've done is like 58 to 100 feet, so I won't be even getting anywhere close to the limit. All right, let's take a look at chat real quick to make sure everything is kosher. Um, looks like everything is still good. Good. All right. <clears throat> so we're going to get into it. Um, let me uh, do some of this and make sure you guys can see the top cam. So we're, I'm going to go over what we have here today. All right. I know this table is a little messy. So... Right here, guys, this is a T-Mobile home 5G internet hotspot. Okay, as you can see, what's kind of special about this is it's powered by USB-C uh, power. So that's a USB-C power input right there. And we got some, we got two uh, gateway outs or your data out. This is for your internet. Okay, and that's where your SIM card goes. This is a T-Mobile um, home internet 5G gateway, and it's a little dirty right now. Um, I actually got this for a really good deal. Um, 
Back in the day, you probably can't get this deal anymore, unfortunately, but if you had a business account, which anyone can have a business account, it, it, they didn't, literally when I went to go give them my business documents, it was just a picture of like the hand, like my table. Like that was it, and they accepted it. That was a business document. So for a business, T-Mobile account, whatever, $25 a month. That's right, unlimited uh, upload, a download, no, no caps totally unlimited home 5g internet and that was $25 a month as long as I maintain my account in good standing of course now I think you get as low as $30 account a month but then you gotta have a phone and all that stuff so I hopped right on that deal and I've been using this as a failover so what that means is if my primary cable from Comcast goes out this will automatically kick back in on my ubiquity switch I had it wired that way I'm gonna have to figure out a different solution because uh, this PoE stuff is pretty exciting. I'm going to get right into that in just a moment. But that's what this is, okay? Let's go over the next component on this table here. Uh, let me transition back. All right, so we got our patch cable we made last week. Get a little closer. Not a little bit too far. There we go. So we got our patch cable we made last week. Okay, this. Right here is the power supply that comes with the T-Mobile hotspot. And you can kind of see the specs on there. Basically, its maximum output is exactly 45 watts, which is right there. So 45 watts, remember that. Put that right over here. This is our other patch cable that we're going to be using for our demonstration today. And this right here, my friends, this is an interesting device. Now, this only costs like 40 bucks on Amazon, and I'm not sure if I'm going to actually use this specific one but it's a very you know it's just a piece of plastic box i hate plastic but check this out look what it says right here so that says power plus data in okay then look on the other side data out and that's 12 volt to usb c and there's a power light right there kind of curious right well what this does my friends Let's say this is coming in from our router or whatever, a device that provides PoE power. Plug it in right here. And now we got data and PoE power going into this box. And on the other end, we got USB-C power right there and data out. So if we plug in a USB-C cable right there, we can charge our phones, do all that from an ethernet cable. Isn't that kind of cool? So I'll get into why this is special in a moment, but I think I think it's kind of cool. So that's what this box here does, okay? This thing just takes data and PoE in and splits it up so you get power here and a data connection here, and it goes both ways. This isn't just a, come on guys, it's ethernet. It's your standard ethernet that we all know and love. And right here, I got a little power meter just to measure how much uh, this device right here is drawing. So like to prove that it's connected, Right now it's plugged in, you see the power lights on, we're drawing 0.08 watts. If I unplug it, now we're drawing nothing basically. So it's this is the error code for saying it's negative less than 0.05 watts. It can't measure that low. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug that in. As soon as we plugged it in, it went back up. It took a little bit higher wattage and then it's gonna go back down. All right, so we got all of our components here. I'm gonna take a look at live chat real quick, make sure I didn't miss anything. And then we're gonna continue on this live stream. Uh, let's see, let's transition back to the view that you all love. What we got here, we got Efren. Oh, wow, Efren, is, it must be super, uh, super uh, late over there, man. What, what is it? So it's five o'clock here, so it's gotta be like 12 in the morning over there, man. Thank you for joining the live stream. Haven't seen you in a while. Golden Wolf, yeah, I ran 6A in my house. Dude, I am so jealous. Uh, this is just Cat 6. I didn't want to go for A because of the grounding and the shielding and all that stuff. And you got to put a special drain wire and the crimping and all that and the special terminal. This is just, I just didn't really see the point of doing it in an old house like this that I may not be here forever. So I went with this because it was also, it's actually not that much cheaper, but it's a lot easier to deal with in my experience. I, I would love to go Cat 6A, get that 10 gig going, but um, it's just Cat 6, and it's decent decent Cat 6. This isn't bad cable, it's outdoor rated. Um, Let's see here, Teaspoon Miner, wow, I haven't seen you in a long time, man. Thanks for joining the live stream. 
uh teaspoon mine what's up tag shinji i'm not much man i'm just going over this thing that i think is going to change everything so uh for those in the mining world uh this could actually be a great solution if you have a remote shed somewhere you have cell signal there but no um internet connection this right here would be all you need to run everything and remote check it and all and then it and it's in one nice little package here. Uh, we're going to build this and set it up here in a moment. Um, let's see. Efron says, did you install a secret spy chip into patch cable? Oh, no, it's not one of those. It's not one of those. Uh, Golden Wolf says, PoE injector. No, no, no. This is not a PoE injector. This is a PoE dejector. The opposite of an injector. This sucks the power out of PoE and puts it into a... USB-C format that is auto, you know, handshaking and all that, which is makes this a little bit special. Um, let's see. New England Crypto. Hey, man, how you doing, man? Nice to see you. Thanks for joining the live stream. Say hi to Stella for me. Um, let's see. Soul7 says, OMG, it's the Ford lover. <laughs> New England Crypto. Hey, he's got a cool truck, man. I like his cars. Yeah, Teaspoon Miner, and it definitely has been a long time, man. It's been a long time. Um, teaspoon miner, the adapter looks pretty interesting. Yeah, I'm gonna build this in a moment and, and I'll show you why this excites me personally so much. Like, I've been thinking of a solution for this and I finally, they make these, just, you just buy them. And it's such a specific example, but I think it'll, it'll do more than just for me. Like, everyone can use this method. Um, New England Crypto says, what? Need to know more. <laughs> I am at a campground, Maine, have my PC all set up in the cabin. Oh, what? You should have told me, man. Um, if you're going to be there like later tomorrow, uh, you're probably coming back by. You should have told me. I would have come by and visited. Soul7 says, so basically if your device... Oh, uh, man. See, YouTube put this little heart thing right next to it. So I can't like... I can't see that last word, which is really annoying. I'm just going to do... Uh, what was it? How do I pop this out? I'm going to pop out the chat because it here we go pop chat out there now the heart the little heart emoji thing won't be blocking the words it's very very annoying what youtube decided to do all right let's see what you say so basically if your device if your devices you are installing isn't poe compatible yes so this is not it doesn't take poe it takes um thank god it takes USB C, which is very standardized if it wasn't like a 12 you know like a barrel connector like this one, right? These barrel connectors kind of scare me because even though they're a standard, they don't all follow the same standard and they might be different ampages and wattages. With USB-C, it automatically, it will not give it more power than it can take because it's an auto. It automatically determines what it needs. Okay, so let's get, let's get this, let's get this build going, guys. All right, so here's what we're going to do. So I got something quite special right here. This is not a normal, I'm going to unplug this so... And I'd also don't want to drop that cable. Um, I'm going to zoom in and show you guys what this is. All right, guys. So this is just looks like a standard gigabit switch, right? This looks like a regular gigabit switch. But no, this has PoE plus. And that means it can do up to, uh, I think it's 50 watts or no, no, I'm no, sorry. Uh, 35 watts or something like that. Let me see on here. Um... Says it somewhere how many can do well whatever so it, basically this can give us the wattage we need it's more than just regular poe so we got poe plus on all five ports right here okay and you can see right here we got poe power and regular power as in powering the switch okay so this is just a unmanaged switch it's a dumb switch so to speak so we're gonna go ahead and power that up here that was kind of cool let me let me do that on camera so you see, I'm going to plug that in, boom, all those LEDs turn on. Okay, so we have power, and that's PoE max on the bottom right there. So like I said, we're only taking 0.08 watts with this thing plugged in. All right, so we're going to build our system. So we got our little box right here, okay? And I'm going to show you what this says right here. So you can see this thing can output up to a maximum of 45 watts. And this takes PoE plus power. So it says splitter. Basically what it's doing is it's taking a PoE and splitting off the ethernet with a USB-C output, which it says right there. Okay. So 
And what we're gonna do is plug our ethernet cable into the switch. We're just gonna go in the middle port right there and then plug it into the correct side. Now, it doesn't matter which way you plug it in, it won't hurt it. If this is a correct, if this is on the correct standards and everything, it'll do a handshake and determine how much power it can and can't have. So that way there's not 45 watts going into your laptop, right? We don't want that. It, if it's appropriately designed a uh, non-passive switch, it will detect it and not do something bad. So it does have to go on the right side though. So we're gonna go right here and Yep, so now this green LED, trust me, this green LED is lighting up right here. It's kind of hard to see, but it is lighting up. And now we're drawing, um, now we're drawing 1.4 watts with nothing connected, okay? So now we got PoE power going from here to this box. That means this 12, uh, this uh, USB-C right here rather, PO, uh, USB C power delivery out, DC out is active. So we're going to plug our USB C in there, right? And then we're going to power our T Mobile hotspot, which goes in right here. Okay. Now we're going to be going to the startup. See? Hey, look, it's turning on. See? It's turning on. You see the T right there? It's going to start setting up and all that good stuff. All right, then you might be going, well, Shinji, what, what does all that mean, right? Like, wh why do you care? Well, okay, so here's the deal. Um, this will produce a Wi-Fi signal all on its own, right? Okay, it has a modem and a router built in, but we don't want that. We just want to use it as a modem, as a 5G LTE modem, okay? So it's still, um, it's still powering up and all that good stuff. Let me uh, show you guys that. So it just says uh, powering up, so that means it's just starting up. Okay, so um, now we need data, right? So we're going to plug data into our in and out, basically, on the opposite side. So PoE is coming in here, and this is our data. So we're gonna plug data in right there, and then plug it into the WAN port. Okay, so now we have a wired to the actual internet connection going with one cable, okay? See this, guys? One cable is powering this device and giving us the data we need. We do not need this. This is no longer needed because we are powering it through the ethernet cable, okay? And of course, we're in a bad spot in the house and it says your connection is weak, kind of like me. Anyways, um, so yeah, let me zoom out. That way you get a better wide shot of this. A little too much come in a little bit so t-mobile hotspot device that allows power to go in and device that allows uh, data to come out into our switch okay so now we have a fully functioning internet okay and it's all powered on a mere 13 watts of course of course this is like idle right now it's not doing anything we're gonna plug this into our laptop and show you what it does in just a moment here. Let me take uh, change back to, yep, connection is weak. By the way, this can receive text messages, which is kind of cool if you need a burner number. Oh, now we got no signal. So this, I'm in, I'm in an area of the house where this doesn't work very well. It works really good when it's upstairs. And I'll, I'll get to, I'll get to why this, uh, I'll get to why this, all this contraption, this craziness is, is something I'm interested in and why I'm doing it. Uh, let's take a look at the chat here. Um, so basically, if your device, yes. Teaspoon miner, nice. Soul 7 PoE plus equals 30 watts. Yes, you are correct. That's basically, that's probably exactly what I was talking about. I just didn't remember the number at the time. Now, some advantages of this system, right? If you're gonna be plugging in your AC adapter, and this is in an area where, you know, you don't have power yet or you know it's kind of hard to put an outlet box there well guess what now you gotta hire an electrician or you gotta do it yourself and guess what electrical copper cable is expensive right and in some jurisdictions you're gonna need a permit to do that uh, like in my city you need a permit for basically everything which is lame because those um, jerks want to take all of our money they want us to permit so with low voltage electrical cables in most jurisdictions no permit required 
no special conduit, nothing. It's it's as if you're just running like, uh, you know, you're an extension cord for your low voltage device. So not only not dealing with 120 volt mains, um, I think it's also more efficient. You don't have these little power bricks everywhere. And now you can run one single ethernet cable up to somewhere way more convenient and put your T-Mobile hotspot there instead of down here where it says your connection is weak. When I have this in my attic, it says your connection is very good, which is the four bars out of five. Five is like you're right next to the tower. You can, you can almost never get that. So that is why I find this to be exciting because it saves money on that type of stuff. I could run one ethernet cable for my Ubiquiti Dream Machine Pro uh, special edition in the basement all the way up to my attic, one cable, give it PoE and data, and I can make this into my failover internet. That way when my main lines from Comcast goes down, this will automatically kick in and take over. And Ethernet cable is much cheaper than, you know, 14 or 12 gauge or even 16 gauge electrical wire to wire a 120 volt circuit up there to give this power. I already have power up there, but I currently do not have any receptacles. And this is an old house and they did a lot of fly splicing, which is very scary was legal back then I guess but I don't think it should be and I got to figure out how it's all wired this is a quick solution um, it's not very easy so to speak because you got to still wire everything but this is quick and you don't need any permits in most jurisdictions which is why I'm so excited about this um, okay so let's transition back So obviously down here, we're not gonna have very good signal. And um, I should have thought about this, but you can see we got the whole system up and running. So now I can plug a internet device into here, right? And you know, up to four ports or put into a bigger splitter or whatever, and give those also PoE. So for example, if this is all I had right here, I could put a surveillance camera remote spot on like a solar battery with this T-Mobile hotspot, no internet required, right? Because it's already connected to the internet or something, anything that really needs internet, as long as I have some kind of power source. Now, I could plug this, like if this is in your remote shed that just has a nice heavy duty power line going to it, but no internet, you could put one of these in there and give internet to everything in there. Now this does generate a Wi-Fi signal. Um, unfortunately, um, oh, unfortunately, um, it's, it's, you can't turn it off. You can't turn it into a bridge only mode. Um, at least not that I know of. I tried doing it, I tried researching it. You can't really turn it off. It's always uh, gonna be a Wi-Fi signal device. So yeah, um, if I could do this, I should have thought about this. I was gonna plug this into the laptop and show some speed tests, but that would kind of defeat the purpose because this is in the wrong spot. This has to be in the attic with my uh, ethernet wire that's already been run. <laughs> so I should have thought about this. I won't be doing that, but I can guarantee you I'm getting like 600 meg downloads through 5G, okay? And like 50 meg uploads on this thing when it's in the attic in the most optimal position in my house. It's Attic is technically the third floor. So it's about 35 feet up in the air, at least around here. I have uh, 10 foot uh, floors because I have nine foot ceilings in each level. And that's about how high it is from surface level, just like street level. So that's why I'm super excited about this little device right here, this little box. Um, it allows all this to happen. Um, depending on how much wattage we pull, I might be able to just go with PoE, uh, but it's always good to have a lot of overhead just in case, because this thing does get kind of hot when a whole bunch of people are using it or hitting it up, you know, it's doing a lot of processing. All right, let's take a look at the live chat and see how things are going. Uh, oh yeah, I popped it out. I was like, where did it go? Let's see. Uh, <laughs> New England Crypto says something. Let's type balloons to it and see if we can get high enough to get to f to five bars. Um, so <laughs> if I do, <laughs> I'm afraid if I do that, the freaking U.S. government's gonna be like, ah, another balloon. It's you're one of them. You know, I gotta be careful with that one. Um. Actually, so it is not about height completely. It's also about your uh, location. So this is highly dependent on where your closest 5G tower is. At 35 feet in the air, um, I am away from almost every obstruction. All there is is my wooden roof and there's nothing else in the way. 
So I'm able to actually get that really nice signal um, almost totally unobstructed because the cell towers are pretty high. But yeah, if I put on the balloon, I think um, I think we could probably, yeah, we could probably go up a solid like, I'd say 50 feet. That will clear everything. Um, and that'll get us an exceptionally strong signal. Maybe that'll get us those five bars and get us the true one gigabit upload speeds of 5G LTE. But that's gonna look really suspicious. Super suspicious. I'm gonna have to have like a PoE line going up, right? All the way up to the thing. Have it weathered so it doesn't like, doesn't matter if water gets on it. And I'm gonna have to have a continuous supply of helium going to the balloon because it's always gonna run out of helium, right? Because it permeates through the, the membrane. So I'm gonna have to have tubes going up plus a cable to hold it down so it doesn't fly away. And it's gotta be like ballast, right? So it doesn't like, you know, doesn't get blown away by the wind, right? It doesn't go like this. So yeah, guys, uh, this is um, what I've been testing. It's been working pretty well. I'm still trying different things out. I did put this in the most optimal spot of my attic and it's giving me great signal. And guys, one cable. I don't know if, I don't, if you guys ever did security cameras back in the day where it needed like a coaxial cable, you know, for your red, green, and blue and all, and also needed power. It was so frustrating to run low voltage power to it from some weirdo spot or you need to get those cables that had power and video in the same thing and it split off at both ends. And those are special. You couldn't just, you know, I guess you could make them, but they're a pain. Um, this, the PoE, the one cable system is definitely like amazing. So eventually I'm going to like, you know, I'm going to Velcro it to the side or something or underneath it, whatever, probably in front because the side has all these holes for vents. Um, I'm going to put it on there somewhere and put it up in my attic and run that cable all the way down to my ubiquity switch in the basement and uh, have it as a failover. Um, there's some kinks and things I still gotta work out, but I think this is gonna work excellent. So let me know in the live chat or in the comments down below if you're watching this after the fact, what'd you think about this system? Um, would you ever use PoE like this? Uh, this is not a PoE injector, it's a PoE dejector. It's a PoE splitter technically. Um, I didn't know these existed and I always wanted to do this. And it's so great that the T-Mobile hotspot uses uh, 12 volt uh, or not 12 volt, the uses USB-C as its input. It's so much more compatible with all of our bricks and all that type of stuff. This can put out up to 45 Watts and this uh, PoE uh, splitter right here can accept up to 45 Watts, which is pretty, pretty nuts. Uh, let's see. New England Crypto says, I was just served an ad. I left the whole, I let the whole ad play. You're welcome. Oh, that's so sweet. I appreciate it, man. Um, I did see a warning that there was going to be an ad, but I, I don't know if there's anything I could do about it. Um, the, the ads for these live streams, unfortunately, you know, there's only like a couple of people watching, but it's, it's all right. Uh, I really do appreciate all of you being here because I get to share, you know, things that excite me personally. And I'm going to, do a video on this one day, but in the live stream, it's so much easier. There's no editing. I could just show you what I'm doing. And um, yeah, I'm going to put this in my base and my attic, get that all run. And it's going to be great. It's been, it's been working very well for me at least. Um, yeah, guys. So if you have any questions, please let me know. This is the time to ask. I'm going to wait for chat to catch up for a little bit. And uh, we'll just do a, another transition here and zoom in. So T-Mobile right here, taking 12.9 watts or so. Got our PoE switch right there, and it's giving everything power. So let's see, doesn't say my signal is any better. Your connection is weak. <laughs> of course it's weak. We're like in a lath and plaster house. It's raining and we all know water absorbs radio frequencies and it's on the first floor. It's in a horrible spot. It's like, not even next to a window, right? <laughs> yeah, this, is, this this took me a long time to figure out. Um, another thing, oh yeah, I gotta go into the other portion of the podcast, which is the weekly update. Let's see. So yeah, this week, um, got a, I'm pretty busy. I got a lot of stuff going on. So at the end of the month, for those of you that don't know, I do own a house and I am uh, renting out the rooms in it. It's a three bedroom house and 
I don't need all the space and this is kind of the point of the reason why I bought it. So I'm renting out three, two of the rooms and those two new tenants are going to be moving in at the end of the month and they've signed their leases. They gave me money and they are all good to go. They'll be moving at the end of this month. The only problem with that is I got to move out of the room I'm currently in and I got to build them a special loft bed and all that stuff. And I got to build my new bed because I'm getting rid of the bed I currently have. I've, I've had that bed for seven years. It's just like your twin XL bed frame on the floor. I'm gonna break it all down, throw it away, and I'm gonna build my new loft bed in my new room, which is gonna be the baby room. If you watched in the video on my channel about the tour of the uh, studio, that is the baby's room the, where the kids, the kids room or whatever with all the weird wallpaper and stuff. So I'm gonna be moving into that room. Smallest room is gonna get rented out. The master bedroom is gonna get rented out and uh, I'm gonna continuously do upgrades and repairs on the house. Just got my garage door installed. Man, it is nice to come home, push a button and have the thing open. It's nice to have an automatic garage door opener. I got it. So the LiftMaster garage door opener has a camera on it now. Did you know that? So it has a camera and a backup battery and is connected to my Wi-Fi. So I put a access point, <laughs> I put a, so this is how OP it is, right? I put a Ubiquiti uh, U6 light in my garage access point to give it better coverage and I run I ran this exact same cable um, down oh sorry I'm not on the right view I run this exact same cable down uh, into the garage through a pre-existing knob and tube connection all the way down to my ubiquity switch so there's two of these white cables going out to my garage one for the cameras and one for the access point which is just hilarious only someone like me would do that Oh, <laughs> uh, let's see here. Let me take a look at chat. Smash that like button if you haven't. Yeah, guys, we got more people watching than we have likes. So smash that like button, guys. Um, Soul7 says, Tech Shinji Community Get Discord. Yes, thank you very much. Um, we need to build stuff. Let's do it. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, um, I got to build more things, man. I, gotta, I definitely got to build more things. Um, I'm like, I'm like been so busy with like background stuff that I just haven't had time for YouTube in general. Um, it was, it's, it's not been easy. Uh, by the way, yes, Timo, this is the $200 torch. Um, that's the current value of these torches in Call of Duty. Um, yeah, guys, so this stream this week is not going to be that long. I just wanted to show you what I was working on. Um, I actually haven't been feeling well most of the day and I just had a, had a bit of brightness where I'm able to be attentive had a nice tea so I'm doing I'm doing much better um, I'll be playing Call of Duty in a little bit so if anyone wants to play tonight just at me in discord if you haven't joined yet go ahead and join guys um, we're gonna go ahead and end the stream real soon here let me just go to my other computer and make sure everything is ready to go um, yeah everything's ready to go I think we are good all right guys well thank you for joining this stream remember same bad time same bad channel and uh, we'll see you next week. Thank you for everyone that came by. Bye-bye.